Hello students, this is chapter 7, simple sentence, lecture 2, a continuation for the previous lecture, uh, which is about the simple sentence, English grammar, fourth year students, college of education, uh, department of English. Uh, in this lecture, we'll talk about close elements in terms of syntax I mean what are the syntactic functions of the elements of a clause we can mean, make use of the points mentioned in the book uh, to identify which word or clause is subject which word is object complement adverbials adjectivals verbals and so on and so forth now, going down to the subject, if we want to syntactically define the subject, then we should know several things. First, what is the function, the, I mean the grammatical function of the subject? And then, where is the position of the subject? So, the grammatical function and the position of the subject and then what kind of uh, 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 word class or part of speech that can fill this slot or this grammatical uh, uh, function or this grammatical slot okay now at the level of the subject it is a noun a noun phrase or close which func functions as a nominal function so it is a noun a noun phrase a clause or sometimes uh, uh, other parts of speech however here we have only a noun phrase a cl uh, or a clause so the noun phrase consists of as you know noun phrase consists of pronouns nouns uh, i mean proper nouns pronouns uh, adverbs ad and so on and so forth uh, briefly speaking the subject the subject can be a noun phrase or a clause so where does it occur it occurs before the verb phrase in a declarative sentence of course or after the operator in the question the operator which is the auxiliary verb used to uh, uh, raise uh, a question so its position is either before the verb in the in the declarative sentences and or after the operator or after the auxiliary verb in the question of course subject is characterized with person and number concurred concurred or agreement person and number concurred or agreement which is uh, when when we deal which is when we deal with the uh, when we deal with the uh, with the third person singular then the verb or the subject must must be in concord with the verb for example she has a pen so since she is the third person uh, then she uh, then uh, the, the this pronoun must be in concord with the verb has or have and the same matter with the uh, with number if we say she then it is uh, a pronoun referring to one person one feminine person uh, for, uh, they a pronoun referring to uh, more than one uh, person now the second element of the clause which is defined previously as the simple sentence 
the second uh, element is the object again what is the object the object is a noun phrase or a clause the grammatical function of the subject is I mean the uh, the the uh, uh, the part of speech of the of the uh, of the object is either uh, a noun phrase or or a clause now what kind of function does this uh, 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 element which is the object uh, convey it has or it conveys a nominal function a nominal function the function which is related to a noun so where does it occur it occurs uh, uh, after the subject and the verb phrase now it follows the subject and the verb phrase it follows the subject and the verb phrase now if we have for example if we have the uh, the sentence object is a clause element now object here is the subject of the sentence is is the ver uh, is the verb of the sentence an object uh, and uh, a close uh, a close uh, element a close element is the complement of the sentence so what type of uh, 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 sentence which has uh, uh, an object again it depends on the verb it depends on the verb certain uh, as we as we have previously explained certain uh, sentences or so, uh, I should say certain verbs uh, may take uh, object which is either direct indirect etc now for example Ali knows Ahmed now Ali is the subject which is a noun phrase knows is the verb verb phrase which is no plus s of third person and Ahmed is the object now where is the object here it follows the subject and the noun phrase so subject noun uh, sorry a verb phrase subject verb phrase and then the object in passive when we turn the sentence into passive it takes the position of the subject but it is not the real subject it is the grammatical subject or hypothetical subject why because the uh, uh, because it is the object it is uh, affronted for certain stylistic reasons now it is of two types of course the object is of two types either direct object or indirect object direct object as we have explained previously is the object upon which the action uh, 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 is taking place while the indirect object is the object or the receiver or the receiver or the beneficiary of the action for example I gave you a lesson so what is what is it uh, 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 that is given the lesson so the direct action took place directly on the lesson while you which is the other object is the receiver or the beneficiary of the lesson and and the indirect object now a complement the third element is a complement again it is a noun phrase an adjective or adjectival phrase or a clause again with a nominal function for example I am Basim now this noun phrase basim which is noun proper noun uh, is a complement to the uh, subject or adjective Ali is uh, certain now this certain is adjective again a complement to and so on and so forth now it fa so uh, its position it always follows the subject and the verb phrase the subject and the ver and the verb phrase if there is an object it follows the object for example I elected Ali 
a nomin a no uh, I elected Ali uh, a president. Now this is this president is the complement of the object which which should be which should come after the object. Now uh, it does not become the subject in passive. Of course, the complement cannot be turned into the subject in passive, uh, just like the the object. It cannot be uh, done. <coughs> now, adverbial. The adverbial again is a noun phrase, adverb or adverbial phrase. So the noun phrase can be subject, object, uh, complement, adverbial. Okay. Now, uh, of course, adverbial or adverbs are always mobile they can they can be initially or at the beginning of the sentence in the middle of the sentence or at the end of the sentence and this gives the stylistic flexibility of the of the uh, of the adverb it is optional it is optional which is not always optional sometimes it is optional sometimes it is not and we have explain this in the previous lectures uh, that is it can be added or removed without affecting the meaning this is not always there are so many verbs taking obligatory uh, adverbs now the most uh, now these are the uh, uh, close elements according to syntax syntactically defined when we define them according to syntax as we said uh, we deal with uh, with the uh, position with the position they fill with the uh, with the element or grammatical function they uh, fill uh, with their uh, with their behavior inside the sentence and their uh, types and characteristics in terms of syntax now we turn to the close elements semantically defined in terms of semantics now what are the meaning or the meanings what are the meanings that these elements can uh, convey now here we follow the 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 uh, the semantic roles of any given element now the most typical semantic role of the subject now each of these elements has a role each of these elements has certain role the most typical semantic role of the subject is agentive what does agentive mean it means the animate being instigated instigating or causing the happening uh, the happening denoting by the verb for example John opened the letter opened this verb as we said the verb is the center of the sentence this verb takes a subject which is uh, 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 animate as agent agent the doer of the action the one who does the action who's this one it is John so John opened the letter now this is called agent uh, the, the this role is called agentive or the most typical semantic role of the direct object is affected which means the animate or inanimate involved directly by the verb so if we take the same example John opened the letter now the letter here is the affected entity and since it is affected in terms of semantics then it is the object or many MPs criticize the ministry so the letter is inanimate while the ministry is uh, or uh, can be animate or inanimate as well now uh, now here we're talking about the most the most typical semantic roles for subject which is agentive and the object which is 
affected now there must be there must be other roles but the most typical ones are these agent for the subject and affected for uh, the object now the three the most typical semantic role for the indirect object is that of recipient or receiver as I just uh, explained the animate involved indirectly by the uh, happening of the verb for example I found you a place you which is the receiver of the action is the uh, is the role of uh, an direct object or the recipient for for subject complement the semantic roles are the subject complement when we deal with the element of the clause which is the subject element uh, subject uh, complement uh, it could have the role of current attribute att attribute current attribute with a state of verbs for example he's my brother my brother is a current attribute or resulting attribute with dynamic verbs how can we distinguish between uh, current attribute and resulting attribute the current attribute is always is always a, st a stative verbs which means it does not take an ing form we cannot say he is being my brother because it is a state while resulting attribute with dynamic verbs the verbs that can take ing for example he became restless became a verb that uh, a verb of w w which which changes from one situation into uh, another now the semantic role of the ob the semantic role of the object complement is also an attribute of the object current uh, and resulting the current attribute for example i ate the meat cold here the verb ate can take uh, uh, cannot take the uh, 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 ing when it is uh, 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 when uh, it deals with uh, not with the process of eating but with the process of uh, realization resulting attribute they elected him president here there is a change of the state from one state into uh, another now how to differentiate between the current and resulting the current means the reference between the subject and its complement is already found the reference it did not change from the beginning it is a fact while the resulting as I have just said uh, the complement is newly added it is a result of uh, 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 fr from an, an old uh, state into a new one or caused by the verb the same way for the subject and its complement now that's all for the lesson for this lecture uh, all the exercises can be found in the workbook I do recommend you to go uh, to the uh, to the lecture online study it hard uh, go to the exercises in the workbook try to uh, uh, solve them uh, and if there is any uh, left out question uh, it will be discussed in the next uh, in the next uh, online session that's all for me uh, thank you very much